Your genetic code is carried by a double helix shaped molecule called DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. The double helix is formed from two strands, forward and reverse. DNA contains a chain made from four types of nucleotide, commonly abbreviated as A, C, G and T. There are slightly more than three billion nucleotides in the whole human genome. The order of these nucleotides spells out the precise instructions required to create an organism with its own distinctive traits. Specific segments of DNA, known as genes, are responsible for physical, inheritable characteristics, such as eye color. Humans have approximately 20 to 25,000 genes. One particular characteristic may be controlled by several different genes. More than 99% of human DNA is identical across the population. However, there are small differences that make us unique. The most common form of variation is known as a single nucleotide polymorphism, or SNP, occurring on average once in every 100 to 300 bases. SNPs are copy errors occasionally introduced during meiosis, the type of cell division that produces sperm or egg cells. Many SNPs appear to cause no difference between individuals, while some are responsible for difference in appearance or phenotype, such as blue or brown eyes. Other combinations of SNPs are thought to influence risk of disease and response to drugs. DNA is packaged up tightly into structures called chromosomes that are located in the nucleus of the cell. Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes. In addition, mitochondria are found in the cell's cytoplasm and provided with energy. They contain separate small pieces of DNA known as mitochondrial DNA. The mitochondrial DNA and nuclear DNA are collectively known as the genome. One of each chromosome pair is inherited from the father and one from the mother. Likewise, there are two copies of each gene, one from the mother and one from the father. Your ancestry can be represented by a pedigree chart. A man is represented by a square and a woman by a circle. Children are shown like this, and grandchildren like this. Some genetic variation is introduced during the formation of sperm and egg cells. When sperm or eggs are produced, each chromosome is first copied, leaving copies attached to one another. At this point, the chromosomes can cross over and exchange DNA with each other, producing new combinations of genes in each generation by a process known as recombination. This animation is simplified because, in reality, recombination takes place in three-dimensional space and crossing over can occur between any of the chromosomes. Because of this exchange, genes from the mother and genes from the father can end up next to each other. The cells then divide to produce sperm and egg cells that contain half the number of chromosomes of a normal cell, 23 unpaired chromosomes, with each sperm and egg containing different combinations of the parent's genes. A sperm and egg then combine at fertilization to form an embryo which has 23 new pairs of chromosomes. Siblings may have large regions of chromosomes in common, but distant relatives will have far less in common. At each generation, more and more genetic variation is introduced. Your chromosomes are therefore a mosaic of your ancestors' DNA. Clearly, it's more likely that genes and SNPs which are close together on the chromosomes are inherited together from one particular ancestor. One pair of chromosomes is unique, the sex chromosomes. Males have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome, while females have two X chromosomes. The sex of their offspring is determined by whether it inherits a Y or X chromosome from its father, leading to a boy or girl respectively. The Y chromosome is passed down uniquely from father to son, so a male will have the same chromosome as his father, grandfather and so on. Over time and successive generations, this Y chromosome has slowly changed and different Y types can be traced to different geographical regions of the world. All present-day human Y chromosomes can be traced back to a common ancestor who was alive about 90,000 years ago. 
it's possible to trace your paternal ancestry using the Y chromosome. Similarly, non-nuclear mitochondrial DNA is always inherited entirely from the mother. This can be used to trace your maternal ancestry line. 